Hello and welcome to this edition of Back in History. In this edition, we bring to you the story of how the lights were turned off at the Namde Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja in February 2010 to conceal the arrival of President Umaru Musa Yaradua, who was so sick at the time, and whom the handlers of the president did not want the public to see in the state that he was. In this video, we narrate briefly the events that occurred prior to his return to the country at night. We also narrate how the CNN was able to capture the secret return and relay it live on its global channels to the embarrassment of Nigeria as a country. We also narrate the aftermath of the live broadcast. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. Humaru Musayir Adwa was president of Nigeria from May 2007 to 2010. His election into office was for a period of four years, but he was not alive to complete his tenure. He took ill in office and had to be flown abroad for treatment. He was usually treated in Wiesbaden in Germany, but this time around, he was flown to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, where he was treated at the King Faisal Hospital Jeddah in the kingdom. It is reported that the reason for taking him to Saudi was to control the news of his sickness and avoid possible infiltration by those considered not to be wishing the president well. Saudi was thus chosen as the best destination for the president. The president stayed in the kingdom for several days, rolling into weeks and rolling into months. And the machinery of governance at home at the office of the president had grinded to a halt. There was no president in the country and no one to act officially on his behalf. Approvals could not be given to move the country forward. Several actions came to a standstill. Several questions were asked without answers and no satisfactory explanations were given about the sickness of the president and when he was likely to return to the country. There was no commander-in-chief to command the armed forces. Yaradwa did not also transmit power to Vice President Goodluck Jonathan before his departure to Saudi Arabia. Nigeria was thus a country without a leader. There was anxiety across the country. It was a country at a crossroad. When the situation continued and the days kept counting with no hope of immediate return on the horizon, the leadership of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the leadership of the House of Representatives held meetings aimed at finding a solution to the quagmire. In one of the meetings, it was agreed that the doctrine of necessity should be applied to transmit power to Vice President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan to act as president till the return of President Umaru Musa Yaradua from Saudi Arabia. This decision was fully agreed upon and taken first before the Senate where a motion was moved and a resolution passed by the upper legislature transmitting power to Jonathan. A similar action was also taken by the House of Representatives. Jonathan then officially assumed the office of president. Following this action, the handlers of the ailing president Yaradwa made quick arrangements in Saudi Arabia to fly the president back to Nigeria. At this point, the president was still in a very bad state of health. He was not fine at all. He was still receiving treatment and struggling to recuperate. The medical treatment given to him was still in its most intensive state and the plan to fly him back was most likely against medical advice. But the decision had been made by the handlers of the president and the president needed to be flown back as urgently as possible. This must have been done to secure the seat of power in Aso Rock at all costs for the president. The presidential jet, which had been in Saudi Arabia for months, was immediately prepared for the Nigerian-bound journey. 
the president's health was really bad and he needed to be aided with life-supporting medical equipment and most of such equipment were not in the president's show jet. So, an A ambulance needed to accompany the journey. This was made available and the president was moved from the hospital into the ambulance and the crew members and the president's wife Ture Yaradwa and the personal aides of the president were ready for the journey and Namde Azikiwe International Airport was the destination. The flight was scheduled in a way that the planes were to arrive Nigeria in the dead of the night. Communication was made to Nigeria that all lights in the airport shall be turned off as soon as the planes arrive so as not to make the arrival public. This instruction was to be followed and followed to the latter. Unknown to the president's wife and people close to the president, the plan to return the president in the cover of darkness had been leaked to the CNN. It could have been leaked by Yeradwa's close people or by the officials of the hospital or any other person who got wind of the plan. But the plan was leaked and leaked to an ever-ready broadcaster, the CNN. CNN immediately deployed its agents in Nigeria to move quickly to the Namde Azikiwe International Airport and find a way to plant cameras in the bush by the runway. Their agents immediately entered the airport unsuspected and planted sufficient cameras to capture President Yaradwa's landing without missing any moment. At about 1.45 a.m., a time when most Nigerian citizens had gone to bed, a chartered air ambulance and the president's jet touched down at the airport. As soon as they touched down, all lights in the airport were switched off, as was earlier directed and the airport was thrown into total darkness. The cameras planted by the CNN captured the arrival of the planes when the lights were still on and also captured the moment of the turning off of the lights which threw the airport into total darkness. But the cameras of the CNN were sophisticated cameras with inbuilt ability to record events even in the cover of darkness. The ambulance was made to stop in the middle of the tarmac while a bus, also an ambulance, was driven close to the air ambulance to evacuate the president. The president was safely evacuated from the ambulance and driven in the cover of darkness out of the airport straight to Asurok Villa, the official residence and workplace of the president. Unknown to the president's people, this whole episode was captured by the CNN and beamed live on their channels. In other words, as the evacuation was done in the middle of the night, those that were awake and tuned into the CNN were watching it live across Nigeria and across the world. Nothing was hidden. Nothing was edited. It was live. It was direct. This was the shocker of the century and the handlers of the president were thoroughly embarrassed at how what was supposed to be a secret action turned out to become a public spectacle. It then dawned on Nigerians that their president was in a very terrible shape and that so much was being hidden from the nation. Yaradwa remained in his residence at Aso Rock but could not resume office. He was too weak and still very sick. He was now treated in the Aso Rock Villa. All attempts for Jonathan to see him was disallowed. All attempts by the Senate President and Speaker of the House of Representatives to see him was also disallowed. When the outcry in the country was so much and so loud, a few religious leaders were allowed into the president's bedroom to see him. Islamic religious leaders were first allowed into the president's bedroom to see him, followed by Christian religious leaders on a subsequent date. 
The Christian religious leaders included Pastor E. E. Adeboye of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Most Reverend John Onaikon of the Catholic Archdiocese of Abuja, Bishop David Oyedekbo of the Winners Chapel, and Reverend Emmanuel Kure. The religious leaders all offered prayers for the quick recovery of the president. Not quite long after his arrival in the country, President Umaru Musayaradwa passed on to the great beyond and the Vice President Jonathan was the first person in government to be notified of the president's passing. Jonathan led a delegation to the family to condole with Ture, the wife of the president. The remains of the president was then moved to the airport and flown to Katsina State where his mortal remains were committed to Mother Earth. Analysts have said that the handlers of the president should have allowed him to remain in Saudi Arabia where he was receiving quality treatment and should not have rushed him back to Nigeria at all costs. Others have said that he equally had quality medical attention in the Asurok Villa. Whatever would have been the best decision to be taken in the circumstance, what is indisputable is the fact that President Umaru Musa Yaradua, a man whom several Nigerian people loved, did not leave to complete his tenure as President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria. Yaradua himself was a good man and a man of peace and his memory shall remain green in the hearts of many and in the history books of the world for many more years to come. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notification on every new video.